series of videos talking about uh, functions and in Python in particular and what are the different things we can do. All right, so the first answer to what what is the point of functions and what can we do with them is it's just a name for a chunk of code to keep things organized. Second answer is it's a name for some code and we can run it in different ways. So I have some code here that when I run it, uh, it says cheers up at the top. Then this parameter passing function, if I give it different values of n, if I give it different values of n and run it, it prints a chopped off triangle. Um, and so I can use that to draw triangles of different different heights. Um, maybe I also want to pass in a, another, maybe we'll do something like this. Okay, so that's like half of a triangle. Um, maybe I can put these together in an interesting way. A little bit of trial and error, there's that. And maybe I'll go up to this. Okay, we could do some more experimentation here, uh, but I'll just leave it like that for now. Yeah, I don't know, maybe that looks like a ski slope or something. Um, I was thinking we were going to do a Christmas tree, which we could do by adding some options to put extra space in here. So I'm not so super concerned about how this is actually working. Um, based on the input number, it's printing some rows, and each row is some spaces that are repeated some number of times and then a star character that's repeated some number of times. Um, but it's cool because I can print different triangles or half triangles or what, depending on how I define this here, just by specifying a different number going in. Okay, so not only is a function a name for some code to keep your code organized, but we can make it so that it'll actually do the same kind of thing but with different values. Okay, so it's a chunk of code. You can pass in parameters each time we run it. That is good. Um, each time we do this, I want to go through and watch the debugger and pay attention to something um, in particular with the new feature that we have. So I'm gonna pull up the debugger here. Got everything turned on. I'm going to go over here and run. All right, we're at the front, at the top there. Nothing interesting yet. I'm going to step over the print. All right, I'm going to step. I have a function called parameter passing now. When I step, okay, so now I'm inside the function, and I have a local variable n that has a value 3. All right, so this is the first thing that happens when we run a function is if there are parameters, this n here is called a parameter. If there are parameters, it's just matched up with what was in the parentheses down below when it got called. So the three gets set into n. n is a variable that's just for this function. That's why it's called local. Um, this code is going to run and then that function was done. I go back down to here. Notice that the n variable is gone because this function is done. Any variables that get created inside of here, they're gone once it's done. That's a nice thing because you can do some work inside this function. 
And then when you're done doing what you needed to do, that can go away. You don't need it anymore. Okay, so now when we go in here, it's the same code. It's just a different starting value for n. Okay, and when we got out of the function, um, we see that we got our, um, our prompt there again. The code's done. It finished the function, and that was the end. All right, I also want to be able to do um, play computer. So we'll have our list of globals, just like the debugger does. I'm going to have my screen. and trace through what happens. I start right here. I get a cheers on the screen. I get to this statement and I now know that there's a function called parameter passing. I get to this point and I'm going to run the parameter passing function. So I'm going to have a separate area here for variables for parameter passing. The very first thing that happens is this n variable is, is set up. So it's a new variable that's created. It's going to have the value 3. Um, then we would go through um, the loop here. So i is going to get the value n over 2, which is, so it's going to start at 1, and it's going to go up to 4. It's going to go up to 3. That's what the range is going to do in the end. Um, so when, when i is 1, 3 minus i is 2. So I'd get two spaces. Was that 2? That was 2. Um, and then I was 1 the first time through, I get 2 stars. All right, and then we'd be on to the next value of I. So I'll just put a dash there to show that's the current I that I'd be looking at. All right, so 2 over 2 is still 1. Wait, sorry, we're at two, i equals 2. So we're down here with um, 3 minus 2, 3 minus 2, n minus i spaces. So on the next line here, there's one space. And then the number of stars is i times 2, 2 times 2. OK, and then we'd be on to the next value of i. this 3, right, and as we go, so this one would have been um, that's not there anymore, now we're on to this one. The current value is 3, okay, so we can keep track of it that way. Uh, 3 minus 3 is 0, so there's going to be 0 spaces at the beginning of this line. Um, 3 times 2 is 6. That would be on the screen. And then when this, so the loop would be done, I did all the values of i. There's no more indented code. The parameter passing function is done. And this memory here that was allocated for it is freed and so it doesn't exist anymore. All right, and then we would be back down to here. We finish that function call. We go to the next one. We would do this all again. Um, so we'd have a new parameter passing. Everything starts again and starts at 6. I starts at so 6 is copied in. We're going to go into the loop. i is n over 2, 3, so that we would do all this stuff. All right, again. 
I'll put over here a big dot 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 and so on and so forth. Okay, answer two. Functions, a name for